Now, there are all kinds of rights groups that have monitored the situation here in the Middle East for years. One of them is Beit Salem, an Israeli human rights organization that, according to his website, documents human rights violations in Israeli-occupied Palestinian territories. But that same organization lost a large number of its members and its community in the October 7 attacks. Sarit Mikhaili is spokesperson for that group, and she joins me now. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Now, you lost num a number of members of your community, both in the attacks themselves. They were killed. You were telling me that some of them have now been taken hostage. They're in Gaza. But you're also a group that tries to facilitate communication and relationships with Palestinians. So first, tell me how it's been for you, but also how these attacks might impact your work. So the events uh, of uh, October 7th were just absolutely shocking and ab abhorrent for us. Um, as you said, uh, many residents of the Gaza perimeter are actually part of this broad community of anti-occupation and human rights activists in Israel. A lot of them have been supportive of our work and some of them are in fact our members. Um, we lost uh, uh, some relatives of our, of our staffers and also a former member of our board who is now in Gaza, has been abducted. Um, but this didn't stop us immediately from trying to work at also get, get, you know, getting an understanding of what has happened. It, it was a very slow process. Information was not readily available. Uh, but the moment it became clear what was going on, the first thing we did was uh, issue a clear denouncement of this absolutely horrific war crime perpetrated by Hamas. Uh, and this, uh, in a way, I think, was a reflection of all what many other uh, friends, colleagues uh, of ours from Israel's human rights community did mourning our victims suffering uh, and being in absolute shock uh, as you know because of the the real uh, outrage the real um, uh, uh, just absolutely horrific acts that were taking place that would, were perpetrated by Hamas but at the, the same time also issuing very clear condemnations uh, both on the legal and moral uh, level of what was uh, occurring and preparing for what was happening and what was bound to happen uh, in the Gaza Strip which is an Israeli revenge operation uh, and at the same time as we are uh, you know in this terrible grief over our uh, people in the south of Israel People that we know and our colleagues and people we work with in Gaza are themselves also under attack, bombarded, running from home to home. Two of my colleagues in the Gaza Strip lost dozens of family members and two of them lost their homes and one is living in a tent right now. So this is where we are at now in Israel's human rights community, looking at um, what is happening now at these, you know, dual war crimes uh, and trying to analyze them, trying to, to provide a, both uh, some sort of factual analysis in, in, in spite of the very difficult conditions in Gaza, but also a moral analysis uh, and, you know, condemning both of these uh, actions by Hamas and by the Israeli government. Do you feel like a lone voice in Israel? Because at the moment, you know, there's, there's this call for war, there's people in this country want to respond. We've seen all these reservists now being called up now, joining the armed forces. Does it feel strange to you to have the position you have, which is you're, you're calling out Israel for war crimes, um, but as an Israeli, you've just suffered a tremendous, tremendous loss. I mean, that's a, it's a complicated feeling, yeah. I guess. I mean, I, I unfortunately, and in a very macabre way, I'm very used to analyzing Palestinian civilian casualties. I've been at B'Tselem for many years and this is what we do. It's quite rare that Israelis suffer such a massive blow and that so many Israeli civilians are killed and murdered in such a gruesome and, and atrocious way. And that was a, a very difficult thing for us and we're still working on, on ways to document and to bring forward testimonies also from the Israeli side as well as from the Palestinian side. Uh, and yeah, absolutely, I think we have to acknowledge that the majority and maybe the vast majority of Israelis are angry, want revenge, but not all Israelis. And I think many um, of my friends, my relatives, my loved ones, and the people I work with on both sides uh, of the divide uh, believe in a different uh, uh, way to resolve this. Understand there is no military solution. Understand that the only way for us to ever have a future in this place is through some sort of shared future. Um, and also understand that revenge is not the way forward and it's not uh, illegal or 
acceptable you to act know, this way. Though, the government has said this is not revenge. They say this is a proportionate response. And they were very angry, actually, at Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, who said that he believed that this attack was not in a vacuum, suggesting that there's a history here. That was not greeted uh, well by the Israeli authorities yeah. here. Can you understand why there was that reaction? Well, let me first say that when Israel says to the international media that it's uh, reacting proportionately, that's in utter contradiction of what Israeli policymakers told other Israelis. They said they were going to wipe out the human animals in the Gaza Strip, and they said that they were going to, uh, you know, shut down electricity to a 2.3 million uh, civilian population. So they made it very clear in uh, political speeches that they were going all out revenge. Uh, but I think that it's important to remember that when um, Israeli voices uh, refuse to listen to things like what uh, the, the UN Secretary General said, right? Condemning Hamas in all ways, in the strongest possible terms, yet describing the context, that is because Israeli leaders and the Israeli government doesn't want to resolve this context. Uh, Israel is continuing to uh, per, per, you know, perpetrate uh, these attacks uh, and these crimes against the Palestinians in Gaza, but Israel is also continuing to perpetuate the occupation and apartheid regime uh, within all of our you know, the area that we control. We are controlling Palestinians and we want to continue to control them. We are taking over land in the West Bank right now from Palestinians through the use of very, very extreme settler violence. And all of this is one part, you know, part of one big picture. And uh, certainly Israeli spokespeople are not interested in talking about the root causes and the background because this means we will have to somehow change our policies uh, and acknowledging that there is, you know, that, there's, um, that there are people uh, in Gaza, uh, two million, two and a half, over two million uh, civilians, acknowledging that we're controlling the West Bank, acknowledging that there is this ongoing situation that cannot be resolved with a military solution, is something that will have to, you know, have to force Israel to change its policies. And I think Israeli policymakers want to continue to control Palestinians, to, to um, uh, reject any sort of conversation about change, and that's why they shoot the messenger. Well, Sarid Mikhail, thank you very much for joining us, Beit Salem, again, a human rights organization which sustained so many losses on October 7th. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.